Can you please explain to people um, what is the right way to set up your the business, the books, your 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 business, your small businesses accounting, or can you talk about that and like what what is the initial like first time entrepreneur need to know and what to do about this, that part of their business? Yeah, I think that's a great question because I think entrepreneurs get really excited about their business and they're excited about their business idea or their product or their website or their service and they just kind of let the books go to the side because it's not fun, it's not sexy, nobody, you know, it's not exciting to set up your books. It's also um, daunting a little bit, it's just mm -hmm. kind of scary. Yeah, yeah. Well, and it's a whole other software that you just think, I don't want to know this and then it's, you know, it's the double entry, blah, 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 you know, has all these words and terminology that just immediately we all shut yeah. off, right? So um, the, fir the first thing you need to do is know that you need books and that you can do it in a simple way. I, I, I use my brushing my teeth example. It needs to be complicated enough to get it done, but simple enough that I'll actually do it, right? So that's what you're looking for when you're putting your books together. Something that's complicated enough that it's going to matter and help you guide your business, but simple enough that it's going to actually do it. You know, you're actually going to do it. So you're saying it's not for, just, in, just mm -hmm. to clear up. So you're saying it's not... For account, it's not, it's not necessarily just for tax purposes. It's for actually for you to have a sense for your to have a sense of your business's finances. Exactly, I call it mining for P and L gold. P and L stands for profit and loss. And uh, I come from California, so that's gold country where people mine for gold. And there's gold in your numbers. I mean, there's just I just get excited thinking about it. There's so much that you can learn from the numbers in your business. I mean, right out of the gate, how are you doing? You know, you can also learn what product or service is is making me the most money. It might not be the one you think, you know, especially when you start comparing what it costs you to offer that product or service. So you, you want to get your book set up in a very simple way, in a way that can continue to generate itself. So again, that idea of teeth brushing, we're going to keep it really simple. So you, you absolutely need accounting software. I don't care how new you are, how little you are, if you haven't earned a dollar yet. If you're serious about being a business person, you need accounting software. It's not expensive. The number two, this is, I believe, firmly, <laughs> you need a bookkeeper. I know it sounds like crazy expensive and, you know, it's, it sounds overwhelming maybe at first. It's so cheap. Once you start looking at, as a small business, what it would cost you to hire somebody to do your books, cheap, 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 cheap. And the best thing you can do. Because number one, you don't have to learn how to use that accounting software. That's awesome. <laughs> And number two, somebody's holding you accountable that we're actually looking at the money of what's going in and out. And number three, they can give you those reports that you can mine for that gold. So you definitely, as a new business, no matter how new you are, no matter how small you are, you want accounting software. Some cheap ones are less accounting, fresh books. There's some, uh, you don't have to go quick books. You don't have to go big right out of the gate. You can use something really small and, and you need a bookkeeper to help you operate it. And that bookkeeper, if you're a small business, could cost you under $100 a month. Yeah, a quick question, you know, is it different from like some businesses have like multiple revenue streams and many transactions, but some businesses have like one revenue stream with like some place where they get their transactions, so it's like they essentially have like one transaction sheet a month. Uh-huh. Is for those businesses, I know you definitely need a bookkeeper for complex like, you know, multiple products, multiple sources of where the transactions come from, but for simple businesses where like let's say you know, for bloggers, mm -hmm. they make money on Google, right? The Google ads. Mm -hmm. So they, one, every month they get a little check from Google. Mm -hmm. It's one transaction per month. For those businesses, um, do they still need that kind of thing? Or for those businesses, you kind of don't? I would say yes, and here's why. Because uh -huh. when you sit down and you look at your P&L every month and it just says Google ads, <laughs> you're going to get sick of looking at that, right? You're going to say, why does it only say Google ads on here? You, all of a sudden, you're thinking of your business in an entirely different way. I tell the story, I have a little brother, he's five years younger than me, and when he was seven years old, he went out for baseball. And in my family, when we're young, we're very skinny. We're like knock-kneed, ridiculously, how does that kid even stand up skinny? So I'm watching him walk on the football, or the, the baseball field, and he's a tiny little skinny guy. And I'm imagining the coach who's thinking, here comes this tiny little skinny kid, it looks like there's a strong wind, he's gonna, you know, blow over. Yeah. But instead of thinking that way and thinking, I'm just going to bench this kid and not pay any attention to this kid, he pours everything into my brother and all the kids on the baseball team because he's serious, because any one of these kids could be a major leaguer, because he's here to play the game. He's not here to fart around. He's not here to see what happens. He's here to play the game. So if you're going to play the game, play the game. 
And is, is, is that to the point of you should actually think about having more revenue streams than that just, just that one, one revenue stream? Like, ah, uh, got it, yeah. Exactly. And your P&L is going to tell you that, right? It's going to stare you in the face every month and say, what are you doing, Alex? You got one revenue stream, friend. You know, that's what you're yeah. going to see month after month. And you're going to think, I'm putting all this hard work into this. And if you're not looking at it, you might not even notice that you're putting a ton of effort in and this is what you're getting out. When you start to look at the numbers, then you start to make that connection between effort and money and you start to become a real business person. Yeah, it's true, especially in an example like a blog because you can quadruple or quintuple just by, you know, a few, if you just add affiliates, if you sell your own products, then, um, then it really makes more financial sense. That makes sense.